I've had a very good day today and I'm going to now make one of the most requested um, videos that I think I've had on this channel and that is people asking to build an automation from scratch uh, in front of them for, for, for LinkedIn. So um, we're starting off with a completely blank um, Integromat flow. And I'll start with a completely blank um, Airtable uh, database as well. So we'll just call this test base and we'll delete these fields. Uh, so essentially you can like have whatever information you want here. Obviously we're gonna want the first name. Um, I then call like LinkedIn URLs personal LinkedIn because just to differentiate between the company. Um, perhaps you want to store the company LinkedIn as well. Uh, and usually I would then take t connection degree and a required field for Integromat is the last time um, this field was edited. So we can, uh, I can okay, we can do all fields. Um, and this is like the one thing I think people don't really under understand. Like I see quite a lot of comments from people saying like, how do you add like a two day delay? Like in Integromat don't support that. You're absolutely right, they don't. But so the logic is actually built on top of Airtable. Airtable is our database. This is where we have, we store all of the data so we know what actions have been done, um, like connection request sent, message one. So we can just do like a two stage follow up, message two. So we're, we're tracking all of the information here. So Integromat is just performing the actions for us, but we actually need to tell Integromat what to do. So let's start off, uh, obviously we'll do Airtable. And Airtable is just down to personal preference for me. Like you can easily build this on top of your, your CRM um, or even like Google Sheets or something. I just like building off of Airtable because it's very, very flexible. So we'll open up a test base, table one, and trigger field, this is what I said, they need to know the last time something was edited, label can be name and grid can be this. Um, we'll just work with one record at a time for now. And so let's say what we're gonna do is come over here and we want a router. And all this is gonna do is push each individual um, action that we want to take is going to go down a specific, specific path. So obviously the logical steps that we're going to take are first off, we're going to send a connection request. So um, just to make this simple, send connection. So you can now see here on this path what is actually happening. Send connection message one and then message two. So here we're going to go and add an action, growth hacking, and we can do we can do invite and connect uh, is going to be the best one. So we'll go ahead and pull our API token. This is just a test token that I have, and we're going to need to grab our LinkedIn cookie. We could also, like, if, as you get more advanced with this and you have multiple accounts, we could actually store the cookie in Airtable, which is what I do in, in my other flows for managing 50 accounts. And then we send that over automatically rather than needing to do this every time. But let's just keep this simple and, and we'll save that for, for another video. Um, so let's go and take LinkedIn, paste that here. And then the profile URL, we're gonna send this over dynamically. So we're gonna store the, connection the person we want to connect with in here and we'll send that over automatically. And then for the message, we can just do hi, first name. I'd like to connect on LinkedIn. Just to explain this very quickly as well, you can also add in information from here. So let's say we scrape their website and like we know the technologies they're using. We can just paste this information in and it will be dynamically added in for that exact contact. But for now, let's just keep it really simple. Kind this. Nathan and click save. And then all we're gonna do is Airtable update a record. 
come down here and obviously we're only working from this database so in the same database same view we're going to put in record id and let's say we want to store like connection degree and connection request sent so i'm just going to run a test because we have to do this in order to get the data so let's run on this person Cool. So we've now got our response and basically we're just going to come into result object and this is where it's going to show all of the information that we that we want basically. So we can go and sync that back over to um, back over to Airtable. And obviously like I don't really care about the, the whole name so we can just put the first name in there. Um, personal LinkedIn we have, company LinkedIn, why not? You never know if we can use it in future. Um, company URL, connection degree. So we want to know what level of a connection they are currently. Um, connection request sent. Now, usually what I would do here is we can print the uh, current date. But actually, you can put anything um, and then message one has not been sent. But in fact, what we could also do is actually add some more fields, like maybe you want the job title is quite an interesting piece of information to have. Um, essentially, anything that you saw in that response will, will be um, will be pasted here. So let's just go and add that in as well. Job title. Cool. So that is now done. Um, so any LinkedIn profiles that we add in here, they will automatically be connected to and um, synced back up to Airtable. Um, and then just to be like super quick, let's go ahead and do like message sender. Um, and then on this next, uh, where's my, there's my token. Personal LinkedIn, message text. So this can say like, hi, first name, great to connect. I'd love to talk with you. about xyz um so you're just sending like an introduction message so that can then be added in there so essentially once someone accepts your connection request we're going to filter this to say connection degree it must be level one so connection degree contains one and then we will also do and linkedin two so message one does not exist. Okay, so th that is how we're sort of building the, the logic. Um, so as long as message one has never been sent before, then it will come down here and they must also be a first level connection. So then based on the outcome here, we're then gonna put message one sent and here like let's just do a little bit more advanced logic so we can do condition one message one exists and message two does not exist so what we're doing is we're making sure that the first step has been completed and that the second step has not been completed so i hope this explains the logic a little bit better we're basing this off of our air table which is why it's very important that we sync all of the data back so we know what's been done and what hasn't been done then based off that, we can filter and make logic around it. So then what we could also do is a message uh, extractor. And so that way we can make sure that they haven't replied to our message. Let's say that we only want to follow up if, um, if they have actually sent a message to us, if, sorry, if they haven't responded. So we would do as long as user has not replied, then go ahead and send follow up. 
so we can do message sender so and personal LinkedIn so this is checking that they haven't replied and as long as they haven't replied then we'll go ahead and send them a message and as always uh, we can just clone this and sync back to Airtable And over here, cool. So I do there and here. So this technically is all um set up um but i'm sure that you're going to want to see how it actually looks uh when it works so um we could we could actually like have another integromat to go and scrape a load of profiles that like we have that module but i'm just to be like really quick um i'm just going to add a few profiles in here just to show you how this will, will actually work so i'm going to put in a mixture of first level and second level connections. So that's the second level connection and let's find some people we're connected with. First level. So we just want to make sure that um, we're sending like a that the follow-up messages are going out correctly. So this is a first level, and this is also first. So let's go ahead and on the second one, like just to speed up the process and show you how it works, we're going to pretend that we've previously sent message one. So we should get an outcome on each uh, event in our flow basically. So let me just put the API token. And my cookie. Number of messages to extract. Cool. So Uh, we can just put first name so obviously like what you would actually do is make like a follow-up and usually this this is going to be like functioning over a, a couple of different days but i just want to show you how the logic in each of them applies so uh connection degree does not exist so this is our database we've got um these people they're going to be connected with and we'll send them a connection request with an introduction message and their data will, will be updated in here. And then on this one, it's going to send a f the first message that we have, this one here. And on the next one, it's going to check if they've replied to a message. And as long as they haven't replied, it's going to send message two. So let's go ahead and change this to run on five records. So as you can see, the first one, because it's not a first level connection, it's been filtered up this path to go and send a connection request. So cool, as you can see, it's now got the name there, it's put in the company profile, it said they're a second level connection, we've got their job title, and that is the time that our connection request was uh, sent. It's now running, it's sending the second connection request. And just to like show you for anyone who hasn't used like tools like this for sending 
whilst that's running in the background, I'll just show you that the connection has actually been sent on LinkedIn. So we can see that Ava and Corey have both received connection requests from us. It's put in their first name and it's put in the text that we asked it to, to send out. So that's, that's all working correctly. Uh, so this next one is also going to send a connection request. And after that, it's going to send down uh, to send a follow up message. Cool. So that's now been updated. And as you can see, because of our logic, now we're sending a follow up message because this person is already a first connection. and it should update this one to say message one has now been sent. Then after that, on this next person, it's gonna send a follow-up message. It's gonna send our message to. Cool, so message one on that person was just sent. And now, as you can see, our logic is working. It's first gonna download the message history. And then after that, it's going to go ahead and send a follow up message to this last person. It's going to send message number two in, in the sequence. Cool. So everything's worked perfectly. As you can see, message two follow up has now been sent. Um, so our logic is good. Everything's in place. Um, and obviously, usually we wouldn't sit here watching it. You would just schedule it to run every like hour or something like that. If you wanted to run multiple accounts, you could even make logic for this within Airtable or just simply um, just duplicate this this flow um, just by going back and and cloning the automation. Um, like if you found an email address as well, it's very easy just to add like a Gmail, send an email to that person after it. So it now, like, hopefully you understand the logic and how everything like comes together, how we build everything on top of Airtable and get specific actions to be performed. Um, what we can also do is like a little bit more advanced is we can customize this to say only listen to specific fields. Use these and then we could actually make like a filter to only run on a record every like three days. So we could do last edit. So we could, sorry, we could do is not today, add filter, last edit, is not yesterday. So, and then we can just do add last edit, is not number of days ago, free. So that, that means that we're not going to keep repetitively processing the same records. Um, these will automatically appear again in, uh, in three days time, they'll come back in. So we can then go and check the profiles again, see if they've accepted our connection request and like what's happened. Um, obviously you can customize this how you want. There are other ways to check if someone's accepted your connection request that I'll put out more videos on. Um, but this just means that we can add in like 10,000 records. And as soon as we've processed them, they're going to be hidden from the view for three days. So it means that we're always sending out new connection requests. Um, so I hope that's given you like some ideas and sort of inspiration about how to set up your own automations. Um, obviously this growth hacking tool is a tool that we've built. Um, so we currently actually have a lifetime deal available. So if you're using like Phantom Buster or, or something like that, you're immediately gonna save money. Um, and as always, if there's any like questions, anything that I can help with, um, as always, just leave a comment and I'll be, be more than happy to help. Thank you very much for watching.